Welcome back. You're tuned in to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. For this segment, we've brought you an expert in the field of SEO, search engine optimization, and all sorts of other stuff that Mike Catania has to share with us. He is the CTO of PromotionCode.org. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me. So before we start, I think we should point out that I think you live in Las Vegas now. Is that right? That's correct. So even though you were originally from New England, you were actually a professor at UMass Lowell, you lived in Nashua, New Hampshire, you're not looking at snow out your window right now. I am not. I am looking at 81 degrees of beautiful sunshine. Nice. Ironically, we had pretty close to that four days ago, (laughs) but today we have snow. (laughs) Oh, that sounds about as I remember it. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Doesn't sound like you miss it, though. Not really. So I'm curious, I, while we were on our break, I was checking out promotioncode.org, uh, which is the company that you started. First of all, how did you start that? It was kind of an outcropping of a couple different things. When I, when I was finishing grad school, like most grad students, I had no money, and I was a meticulous coupon cutter. Mm-hmm. And... It was great to have paper coupons, but everything I found online was just unacceptable. They were either expired deals or they were completely made up. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had been teaching a music technology class, and part of teaching that class was teaching basic web design. So I thought, well, why don't I just start my own little one, and maybe I can can share what I find just here in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. And it, within two years, it had blown up, and we were getting hundreds of thousands of unique visitors a month. Wow. Hundreds of thousands? Yep. This was a time before hmm. there was Retail Me Not. Right. This was a time before Coupon Cabin. We were not the first coupon site, but hmm. we were one of the first ones, and certainly wow. one that had what people wanted, which were working codes. I can see why. I'm sure I've been on your site before because anytime I'm buying something online, I will Google to see if there's a coupon code for it. You are not alone. You are in excellent company. Hmm. And it doesn't hurt my feelings at all that no one remembers the name promotioncode.org mm-hmm. because with so much traffic, I feel like everyone at one time or another who yes. shopped online has yes. come across it. Yes. yes. And then... I just I was on the site a few minutes ago and there's like literally millions of coupons and you can search. So for example, this is going to surprise you, Bob. I put in the word shoes. Oh, I'm and, shocked. Now yeah. I'm shocked. And I found like all these coupons. I need to go shoe shopping now because of all these coupons I just found. <laughs> <laughs> so the coupon codes actually make you want to shop more rather than saving you money. Yes. So they they do, and the, the coupons do two things. They entice people who might not be ready to shop, mm-hmm. or if you already have the shoes in your cart and you're ready to check out, mm-hmm. and you see, oh, I enter Zappos promotion code. Mm. Well, I'll just do a quick Google for that and see what I can find. Mm. And then Zappos doesn't offer them, so that was a terrible example to use. But <laughs> most stores do. But how do you make sure? Stuff. How do you make sure that they're up to date? Because I have gone on and I've I've Googled coupon codes before, and the code is no good. So how do you make sure that yours are up to date? We manually and painstakingly check them. Wow. Ooh, wow. There is, we do not have nearly as many codes mm-hmm. as a coupon cabin right. or a retail may not. Yeah. But our codes work. Hmm. So huh. it, it's kind of a trade off. We are absolutely sacrificing quantity for mm-hmm. the sake of quality. Interesting. Which, if it was me, I would prefer. I don't want to go sort yeah. through a bunch of codes that don't work. Right. Right, and it gets your hopes up when you're on yes. a different site and it says, oh, say 30% site-wide. Mm-hmm. Like you, you immediately get excited that that's going to work. Yes. And then you're even more disappointed. It ruins your experience both with the coupon site and whatever store you're trying to buy something from. Mm. So this is kind of cool because basically anybody that's listening to the show today, let's just say that you're a retailer or you have an online store of some sort, you can go on to promotioncode.org and get a free promotion code so that basically people that show up on your site, because you're getting millions of people that are coming there for all different codes that somebody, let's say I start a new company, 
people might fall upon me just by coming to your website. That's exactly right. Our people come to the site. Let's say you own a jewelry company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you can list your store for free. You can list your active coupons for it, mm -hmm. and you manage those. Okay. If someone is just looking for jewelry on the site, a hmm. user can easily get to your page huh. and then have access to your valid codes hmm. with minimal interference from us. Wow, that's cool. So is it all um, sale of goods, or do service providers use it too? Uh, service providers absolutely use it. Hmm. We have had, I mean, we have hundreds and hundreds of, of codes for merchants like Uber and Lyft. Really? Wow. Which you wouldn't even think have promotion codes, but mm -hmm. they absolutely do, and people huh. list them happily on the site. Wow. And what kind of promotions do they offer? It really varies. When Uber started, they had originally had a $30 credit to your account that mm -hmm. never expired. Wow. How awesome so is that? Hmm. if you referred someone with your promotion code, you could accrue hundreds, if not thousands of dollars of free credits and wow. for all intents and purposes, ride Uber for free until they ran out. But That's... as they've gotten bigger and bigger, they've reduced that to now a single $15 credit that expires after a month. But nonetheless, it's still, yeah. still a quick way to get your name out there. Absolutely. Huh, who would have thought of that? I'm going to go on and check it out. All kinds of stuff on there. And if I was a small business, I would absolutely be putting a coupon code on there just to see if I could generate traffic. So that's pretty cool. So right. there's really no liability for mm -hmm. a small business. Right. You put it up there. If it gets you some free traffic, great. And if it doesn't, the completion process is about five mm -hmm. minutes. Nice. So it doesn't take that long to get your codes up there. Okay. Nice. So your business is, you've built your business through building a powerful online presence. First of all, do you have any words of advice for any business owner that wants to build an online presence? If you're, if you're trying to build your online presence, there's not a single company that can't improve the functionality of mm -hmm. its website. Hmm. Another thing that they can't do enough of is improve your position in the rankings. A lot of sites look exactly the same and they display the exact same information. So if you're trying to differentiate yourself, you need to be creating your own content that is appealing to your visitors and that they're going to want to share with hmm. people in, in their world. And the other part of that is having a mobile optimized website. Right. In January of 2015, the Pittsburgh Gazette said only 50% of small businesses even had a website. But even now, having a website isn't enough. It needs absolutely to be optimized for mobile, and it needs to be one that's going to display all of your data in a reasonable way. Hmm. If you've ever hmm. tried, if you've been on a website that isn't mobile optimized, and you yes. have to pinch, oh God, pinch yeah. things really big and drag them, and you can't read what they say, yes. you, you'll quickly realize how annoying that is. Hmm. Yes. And it's annoying to the search engines, too. And, they're, and as a result, they're dropping sites wow. down in the rankings of that that don't perform well for mobile. Wow, that's interesting. Mm. Who knew? How is it that 50% of businesses have no website? Like, you can get a website for free, can't you? Pretty much. You can. That's nuts. I think a lot of it is, is businesses saying, well, this just isn't our demographic. Mm -hmm. People don't necessarily, I don't sell anything. I have an auto parts or I have an auto body shop. Right. I don't sell anything online. My customers know where I am. They physically will drive to my store. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have a website, it gives all of these other review outlets an opportunity to make commentary on your site where you don't have any sort of say right. mm -hmm. in what goes on, where even just a minimal website that's going to show where are you located, what are your hours, what, what is huh. an encapsulation of what you do mm -hmm. really will make a huge that's difference. That's interesting. So if you don't have a website, Yelp's going to make one for you, and mm -hmm. you might not like it. That is Basically. it exactly. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. So what are your thoughts on social media? Do you use social media to build promotion code? We do. We don't have a huge following on social media. Our combined reach between all of the outlets is under 100,000, hmm. which sounds like a lot, but if you think of how many people are in the United States that are using this site, yep. it's not gigantic. Hmm. But I think 
a lot of times social media is touted as this cure-all for, for what ails your business. But right. that's not necessarily the case. What we found for social media is we want to use it to establish ourselves as a leader in our industry. We're not going to make sales on it. We're not going to necessarily stay connected with all of our customers on it. But what we can do with it is make people know that we are the authority in this field. And that's something everyone can do because you're not necessarily posting your own content, but you are posting authoritative articles to it. You are posting interesting movies. Right. You are posting things that, that are really going to separate yourself as saying, this is my area. Anyone can claim to be an expert online, but here is the actual documentation for it. Hmm. That's interesting. So I write a lot of content and I feel like because I write so much content um, through blogging, I write for LinkedIn and Huffington Post and some other magazines that I feel like that even increases the level of expert that you're seen as. So I definitely hear what you're saying as far as the social media piece, at least have your Facebook business page where you're constantly posting stuff so that you're an expert in your field. But also I think if you mix in your own content that you're writing, it kind of up levels your status as an expert. You could not be more right. Hmm. And along that same line, I think it's important to really focus on just a couple areas of social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, between Facebook, LinkedIn, yes. Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo, Vine. Oh, God, you, can, yes. mm -hmm. you can go down endless worm rabbit holes trying yes. to chase down what's the perfect medium. Yes. So I think what you're doing is being a, a class A blogger is mm -hmm. more important than, than someone else having you know, a couple intermittent posts across all, yes. all social media. I mean, you've established yourself as mm -hmm. an unequivocal expert as a blogger. Yes. And I think that's, that is of paramount importance, really choosing your battles and focusing on, on just having an excellent Instagram and having an excellent Twitter. Absolutely. And not, not just going through the motions across all I of the different social avenues. Like there's not a lot of people that are good on all of them. I have mm -hmm. a friend that has built a phenomenal business using Instagram. Like that's her main place where she posts stuff she might occasionally post on facebook and twitter too but instagram's her thing i say for my stuff i get the most traction believe it or not on linkedin just posting blogs on linkedin where i'll get thousands and thousands of views and hundreds of shares so i don't spend a lot of time on some of the other stuff because i know that for the amount of time i have that i'm going to get the biggest bang for my buck on a linkedin um blog Right, and that's, that's exactly the way to do it. I mean, the nice thing about social media is that it plays to or it, it caters to a lot of different strengths. If mm. you are not a terribly articulate writer, then maybe going down the daily blogging path isn't for you. Right. But maybe creating you know, the six-second Vine videos mm -hmm. is, right. or mm -hmm. vice versa. I mean, there's, that's probably one of the greatest advantages of social media is there's an avenue for everyone's tailored skill set. Hmm. Interesting. So we have about three minutes left. Let's talk about how you've built your dream. Cause I know, um, basically you, you created this business out of scratch. Any words of advice you have for other entrepreneurs, maybe students getting out of college or somebody that's stuck in a job that they just don't love and they have a big dream they want to pursue. Find a mentor. Find a mentor, find a mentor, find a mentor. I mean, there is, there is simply no substitution for having a sounding board from someone who knows more than you right. where you can respect his or her opinion. I mean, that is, yes. there's just nothing else that can compete with that. Right. Hmm. That's interesting. Who is your mentor? Uh, my mentor is now my business partner. Interesting. He was an attorney. We have completely different skill sets, mm -hmm. but he is a brilliant and just incredibly industrious person. Wow. And I, I, couldn't, I wake up every day, and this has been going on 10 years, just feeling incredibly lucky huh. that, that this is the situation. 
Wow. And I think a lot of the time when you're first starting out, you're embarrassed to ask questions or you're afraid of, mm-hmm. oh, I, they're going to think less of me because I'm asking these really inane questions. When really, that's the only way to learn. Right. And certainly you can't begrudge someone for doing the only thing that they could possibly do to make themselves better. Right. right. Wow, that's interesting. And I'll, I'll just throw in as far as mentorships go. Um, I, I think another piece is always be trying to learn. Like throughout every single day, I find opportunities that to learn something that I can take into my business. And it could be like I'm standing in line at Dunkin' Donuts and something happens in line where I learn a lesson that I say, wow, I could apply this to my business. So look for opportunities to learn um, all day long, read books, because reading to me is like having a mentor. Like I've been mentored by Steve Jobs because Mm -hmm. I know exactly how he ran his business, how he dealt with things. So there's mentors literally all around us. Excellent advice. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Mike, I want to thank you for joining us on the show. That was great information you shared with us. And oh, that's, thanks a lot. I appreciate you having me. You're very welcome. And that's going to do it for this edition of Get Real with Bob and Stacy. Make sure you tune in again next weekend for more.